What's up, people? Today, I want to come to you with the Criminal Damages Act and how to apply it to police officers. But first, I'm going to take one of the stories that was recently in the news with the young lady in Alabama at the Waffle House. Now, when you're looking at it on its surface, there are several things that are there that you may not agree with and I understand that everybody has their own opinion but there are a lot of violations in that that coincide and create the space for the criminal damages act so let's get into it as I explain things that were violated in the video okay what I'm going to start off with is the fact that in the video that her friend has, you don't get to see the beginning part of the officer walking in. What you do see is the officer walking, well, what you do see is the officer grabbing her. Well, when you go back to the surveillance from Waffle House, the officer walks in and does grab her. Now, the conversation that I had online with one of the people, you know, that was observing the video I guess he was he spoke about there was a call now we go into understanding what a call has to represent and that goes back to Florida V JL 529 US 266 2000 it requires that a tip be reliable in its assertion of illegality not merely in its identification of someone. Now, we can get that there was an identification of someone or the call was made on a particular person because he walks in and does not speak to anybody and walks directly to this young lady. So, what crime was she committing? Now, even in their um, press conference they spoke about her making statements when you hear the statements it sounds as if she was responding to something and even in their statements of her speaking it is I could have anything I could come back and do something now as much as we may not like that or feel that as a threat the words I might or I could are hypotheticals or probabilities of something that could possibly might or a hypothetical or something that can perhaps progress or something that it can come to. Now, because of the fighting words doctrine, she's allowed to respond in any manner with anything about anything. And it goes along with the same speech that's allowed by the KKK when they're holding rallies. Again, we may not like it, but unfortunately, they have to be allowed to say it. I'm going to read off a little something. And it's regarding when you are speaking to a public servant and understanding what the word servant means. Is origin and foundation of government all government of right originates with the people it is founded upon their will only and it is instituted solely for the good of the whole public officers are the trustees and servants of the people and are at all times amenable to them now, when I say that, and you often hear people say, when I ask you a question, isn't it your policy to speak or give me an answer? No, it is not policy. It is a part of their oath, which before they get their job to perform their duty, they have to swear to that oath. The oath is the actual representation or the proof that they have a duty to you 
Now, amenable means as part of their duty, they must articulate answers when asked at all times, which at no time did he articulate a crime. Now, she asked several times, and you also heard them speak, you know, the Ebonics, I didn't do nothing, or she didn't do nothing, whatever. When asked, he has to answer. Prior to touching her, he has to articulate. It's not a choice. It is the law. And as a law enforcement officer, he has to obey the law. Now, understanding that a crime is illustrated in Shear v. Cullen, 481-1973, a crime must exist. There must be an injured party. There can be no sanction or penalty imposed upon one because of his exercise of constitutional rights. Now, with her responding or stating that she could possibly do something, that is her right. Whether we like what she's saying or not, that is her right to respond. She can say it however she likes to say it. We do not have to agree with it. We don't have to like it. It is still her right. They are restricted from stopping her exercising her rights. And if you remember, or as you recall, if she was called because she was being belligerent, if she was called because there was supposed to be a weapon, her thing is, I could have a weapon. When he walks in, he doesn't see her damaging any person. He doesn't see her damaging any property. He did not witness her performing a felony. That was not articulated in the call. He did not witness her being belligerent. She was actually sitting down with her legs crossed. Her thing was she was waiting on a phone number. So if she's not doing anything that allows them to act and they are quote unquote doing an investigation, you have to speak to someone and get someone's side other than just acting off of a call that did not articulate a crime. Terry v. Ohio, 1968, does not allow actions on a hunch, which is exactly what happened when he walks in and is immediately grabbing her, which is illegal and unlawful. And a lawful act, because they charged her with resisting arrest. They also charged her with disorderly. He saw none of that when he got there. So if he's acting off a hunch just because of a call, he cannot then charge her for being quote unquote unlawful because she is allowed to resist she is allowed to resist an unlawful act and a lawful act cannot follow an unlawful one and as law enforcement he is duty bound to know that and for us that are learning what the court actually deals with when I speak about Latin it's ex post facto law so now we're going to go into what we spoke about maybe about a week or two ago with Lewis v. City of New Orleans. She cannot be charged with disorderly for the profanity she was using in the presence of the officers. Whether they like it or not, again, part of the fighting words doctrine. She can cuss. And in fact, she should be able to cuss because he did something that he was not allowed to do. So... Fuck him. It is what it is. Police are held at a higher standard of care and are supposed to be trained on how to deal with the public in a proper manner. Now, apparently, his training was not up to par. Now, I also spoke about we're going to deal with the Criminals Act, the Criminal Damage Act. So, I, all of this builds from this one video. But we also understand that in Florida v. Bostick, a person is seized by police and thus entitled to challenge the government's action on the Fourth Amendment when the officers, by means of physical force, 
or show of authority um, terminates or restrains the freedom of movement and refusal to cooperate without more does not furnish the minimal level of objective justification needed for a detention or seizure. And that's from Brenlin v. California 2007 case. Now, to state that she was being uncooperative, that was the purpose of them three officers, two holding her down and one open hand choking her was his excuse for not using proper police procedure. That is actually thrown out of the way because just like I stated, she did not have to cooperate because he did not do any type of investigation. He did not articulate anything prior to grabbing her, ripping her dress. And the case that I hate to go back to and I hate that to be honest that is out there is bad elk v united states 177 us 529 1900 held that an individual had the right to use force to resist an unlawful arrest and again while i admit that this is a horrible case example it is the basis of all cases that have followed regarding resisting arrest from an officer after the officer has committed a fourth amendment violation and has breached his fiduciary duty when he has broken the trust of the public or she has broken the trust of the public now again the criminal damage comes in from the open hand choke while she's being held down by two other officers he breached his fiduciary duty and the actual tearing of her dress because of the way he threw her down was a deliberate act. That is why he is liable under the criminal damage act. Now, to top that off, this is a federal court case. She has an attorney who is great for getting her a platform but i don't really like the, the guy himself because he doesn't move the people in a manner in which i feel they should be moving because if you remember he was also standing beside a few other family members and victims when they had some issues that went on and he did not allow them or did not progress them for a follow-through and I have issue with that because if you're going to stand there with them, you should be helping them. And again, they have a great case for the Criminal Damage Act because of deliberate actions that tore her dress, that exposed her breasts, and that violated his oath. Period. Because whether they want to defend it or not, it is programming that they're using because they use words like they would like citizens to do. Well, how about whenever I order a T-bone, you don't bring me a ribeye and expect me to be happy. Bring me the T-bone that I order. Because I would like a police officer to do their job. I would like for a public servant to serve their public. Whether they like it or not, that is the job that they chose. So, criminal damage act, liable on police officers hold them liable in federal court so just like wrongful death file it immediately don't wait hold them responsible for their actions so until next time